Familien die Nation erhält. Throughout much of the early 1940s, Europe belonged to Hitler's Third Reich. The Nazi foothold was firm, owed to a vast and mighty fighting corps. And while the Russians tested them in the east with counteroffensive like the Battle of Stalingrad, in the west, the Germans were nearly unchallenged. Western Europe had been without its allied defenders since 1940, when they were driven off the mainland continent during the Battle of Dunkirk. The smoke of battle hangs over Dunkirk, that port just across the channel from which thousands of men of the BEF are coming home. If they had any hopes of defeating the Nazis, the Allies knew they'd have to return. In 1942, Joseph Stalin begged the US and British to open up a second front in the West. But the timing wasn't right. Both considered it premature, given their strength, particularly the Americans who were relatively new to the war, though by then, plans were being made. We've been forced to call out what we in the United States would call the Sheriff's Posse to break up the gang. In 1943, a series of meetings between the leaders of the Allied powers molded a blueprint. And at the end of that year, President Franklin Roosevelt appointed Dwight D. Eisenhower as Supreme Allied Commander, giving him one task above all others, to plan and to carry out a cross-channel invasion. In January 1944, Eisenhower and his team of commanders set to work, developing the details of what would become known as Operation Overlord. Five infantry divisions, two US, two British, and one Canadian were to attack five beachheads along the coast of Normandy, France. They were codenamed Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. Ahead of the invasion, Allied paratroopers would drop behind enemy lines to secure the eastern and western flanks. Preparations carried on for months, complete with endless training runs, reconnaissance missions, and an extensive bombing campaign targeting German airfields, artillery batteries, rail lines, and road networks. But despite the Allies' efforts to conceal their plans, the Germans had long anticipated they'd come knocking on their western front. As early as 1942, Hitler began heavily reinforcing his coastal defenses, creating a so-called Atlantic Wall that ran from the south of France all the way up to the top of Scandinavia. They were ready. But so were the Allied forces. And following a weather delay on June 5, 1944, General Eisenhower gave the order to commence the largest amphibious assault in military history. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. By dawn of June 6th, the Allied Armada had crossed the English Channel. Close to 200,000 troops stared down the Normandy coastline, 
while behind them, Navy ships bombarded its shores. Landing craft steered the infantry divisions toward the beaches. Most only encountered light resistance as they made their landings. Most, but not all. At Omaha, the Germans were deeply entrenched and hammered the U.S. 1st and 29th Infantry Divisions. Nazi machine gunners were relentless, and the Americans suffered some 2,000 casualties. But they continued their push up the beach and eventually broke through. The Atlantic Wall has been penetrated. There, after the first assault, the Allies clung precariously to a few beaches. But now they have a solid foothold on Fortress Europa. Men and material have poured onto the newly won beachheads with every favorable tide, and on some unfavorable ones. The Allied command has announced that the Battle of the Beaches is complete. While not everything went according to plan, Operation Overlord was a significant success, and by many accounts, a key turning point in World War II, one that began the liberation of Europe from the grips of Nazi Germany, an accomplishment owed, no doubt, to the brilliance of strategic minds, and more notably to the bravery and sacrifice of so many soldiers, young men, boys, whose actions on that June 6, 1944, have made it a day never to be forgotten. <laughs>